In this video, we're building Pareto charts in Python. To work in a workbook along with us, go to drstephpowers.github.io slash management dash in dash Python. And we're working on the quality management workbook. So you can click on Pareto charts here. Once it loads GitHub, click on the Google Collab button that you'll find here. And this will take you into the worksheet. Make sure you sign in. Uh, to a Google account, make sure you save a copy and that way you can edit and then save at the end any work that you've done. So I'm just going to go to the version where I have already logged in and this is the same worksheet as the histogram. We're looking today at Pareto charts. So a Pareto chart is a chart that gives us a bit of information in different forms. So we have a column chart here that shows us the amount of occurrences and here we often use Pareto charts to look at uh, issues that our organization is having. So in this case, this is our pizza delivery, and we look at the different complaints that are happening, and the number one complaint is delayed delivery. So we can see how many uh, times that complaint has happened, 1,200, 600 times the pizza was not hot. So our column chart portion of the Pareto chart shows us what issues are most frequent. And so we actually arrange it from most frequent to least. And then you'll notice the Pareto chart also has a line um, on it. And that is to show the cumulative percentage. And that's because the Pareto phenomenon says that 80% of our issues are caused by 20% of um, our customers, are caused by 20% of our workers. So this 80-20 idea where we could solve 80% of the issues by focusing on 20% of something, of, um, of the production. So let's take a look at how to create a Pareto chart. You'll notice in this Pareto chart, it's marked the 80%, and that's because if we can just deal with delayed delivery and pizza not hot, we'll have solved 80% of the complaints and the other ones are much smaller. So we should prioritize our time by focusing on uh, this delayed delivery and pizza not hot. Well, let's go into Python here. And let's suppose that we are looking at um, paint. So maybe we do paint jobs on vehicles. And when it comes to issues with the paint jobs on vehicles, there are complaints related to the paint chipping, bubbling, streaks, scuffs, discoloration, and shine. And so what we want to do is we want to look at how many times each of these issues has occurred. So what we're doing here is we're entering our data in and we're going to put it in as a data frame and we'll start with a data frame that just has one column. So we're going to call this column number and we're going to have 56, 32, 112, 58, 88, 49. Now notice we're doing pd.data frame. So if you did not do the first video, you're going to need to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and you're going to need to import pandas as pd. So that pd.data frame tells us we're using the pandas package. All right, so we're going to enter this data in. We're creating a table and the table has one column, but what we need is an index. So we need to attach these labels for the different uh, issues uh, to our data frame. So you can use the command index to attach to the data frame the index and it should match the order of your numbers. So there were 56 chips, 32 bubbles, 112 streaks, 58 scuffs, 88 discolorations, and 49 shines. So by doing df.index equals and then adding those labels, when we actually say, okay, give me the data frame, give me the table, we can see here a list of occurrences of our different issues. Now, in order to create that Pareto chart, we need to first order this data, just like we did here in this graph. You need to order it from most frequent to least frequent. So the next line of code, I'll actually go back here, where'd it go? Is that we are going to sort values. So we're applying sort values command to our data frame. So df is the name we gave of our table, df.sort values. And then what are we sorting it by? We're sorting it by the column numbers and we're doing it from largest to smallest. Okay, so ascending equals false. Ascending means you go from smallest to largest. We wanna go from largest to smallest. So we're going to sort the values 
And then the other thing we need, because that will help us create the column part, is we need to be able to create the line graph that goes with it. To create the line graph, we need to know the cumulative percentages. So we're going to add a column to our table here that takes these numbers and looks at chips are what percentage of the total. That gives us the chip percentage. But we actually want the cumulative percentage. So we want to start with the highest number, streaks at 112, figure out what percentage that is, and then look at, well, what if we added the discolorations? What percentage are streaks and discolorations? What if we add scuffs? What are streaks, discoloration, and scuffs? So we add the three together. So we're going to create a new column. We'll call it cumulative percentage. And we're going to have it take the number. That's the number column here. So from our table called DF, we're going to take the column called number. And we're going to have it find the cumulative sum. And we're going to have it divide by our number, our total number here, and where it's summed up. So here we have that it's going to find the sum of this column, total that up, and it's going to find the cumulative sum, so however many are already in the column, divide by that times 100, and it's going to round to two decimal places. So we're getting a percentage here. So this formula here for this math problem is going to basically take the number totaled so far, wherever we are in the, in the table, cumulative sum divided by the total sum times 100 rounded to two decimal places. So we do that. And when we call our new table, we've now added this column here. As I said, streaks are 28%. When you add discoloration, you're now at 50%. So now that we have this information, we can plot our Pareto chart. Now, our plotting for our Pareto chart is going to be a little different than the plotting we've done in other videos, and that's because we're overlaying two types of graphs uh, on each other. And so we actually want to use this command called twin x because we have two different x uh, values that we're looking at here. So we're going to have well, not x values, but we're gonna have two, we're gonna have two tables here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a figure and we're gonna plot that figure. And that figure is going to have subplots. So the first two lines you just leave as is. Okay, that gets you started. And then we're gonna add a bar graph, and the bar graph is going to take the index labels from our table, right? That was the scuff discoloration and it's going to plot the numbers for each. So what that is giving you is it's, these are the different index names, and it's going to plot in our bar graph here, it's a vertical bar graph or column chart, and it's going to plot the number of streak occurrences, the number of discoloration occurrences. So that's this ax.bar, and then it's index and number. We're gonna label that chart with type of defect, that's what we have in that index, and then we're going to label on the vertical frequency or counts. Then we're gonna overlay on top of that a second graph. So we're gonna call this AX2, and we're going to apply the command twin X, that's gonna allow us to put the two different types on top of each other. And then our second graph, our AX2, we're going to plot with the index, so the names is X value, and the Y value will be our cumulative percentage column from our table. We're gonna mark it with the little O's, little dots, and we'll make it red. You can make it whatever color you want. We are also going to add a horizontal line, so ax2.ax, H line, so horizontal line. We wanna mark the 80%, because remember the Pareto rule is 80-20, and so we wanna note which items that if we took care of would get us to 80%. And we make the color of this dotted line black and we'll make the line style dashed. Okay. And then we have a label, a Y label for that second graph, which is cumulative percentage. So if we run this code here, what we've created here is we have our a column chart, which uh, Python is calling a bar chart here. And you can see that it's plotted the different types of issues and the number of issues. And then we overlaid on top of that a second graph, which plotted the type of issue, 
and the cumulative percentage that goes with each. So what we can see here is that if we can take care of streaks, discolorations, scuffs, and chips, that'll get us to the 80%. So this tells us we shouldn't focus so much on shines and bubbles. These are smaller issues. We should be focusing on the biggest issues that will make the most customers happy, in which case we should do streaks, discoloration, scuffs, and chips. We'll take care of 80% of the complaints.